What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So I've been asked by quite a few people to do this and after some extensive testing over the past couple of days, I feel like I'm finally ready to rank the new Dragon Ball Heroes units that we got for this year's Heroes collab. Now before we proceed any further, just keep in mind that this is my personal ranking. It's my personal opinion, so if you guys disagree with anything I say in this video, that's totally fine and feel free to let me know in the comments down below about uh, your rankings as well. Okay, so with all that said, let's uh, jump right into it. Starting at number 6, we have Int Super Saiyan 4 Gohan. Now, honestly, this list was pretty hard to make because even though we're ranking them, I think all 6 of these new units are very, very good. So even though Gohan has to be at the bottom of this list for me, um, he's still an awesome unit, you know, he's still getting attack and defense plus 140% and men's damage multiplier, massively lowering the enemy's defense, and the additional 40% damage reduction with 4 or more giant ape category allies on the team makes him a very uh, strong tank. He also has a high chance to stun the attacked enemy, so if you're running a giant ape power category, pure saiyans category team, or crossover team with 4 or more giant ape power units, then he's actually amazing for Super Battle Road, Legendary Goku event, Infinite Dragon Ball History, basically any event where you need a good tank who can also put out a respectable amount of damage, Gohan is gonna be a great option. But now that I've said all these positive things about him, the reason I put him at the bottom here, at number 6, is because I don't love the fact that he only gets this damage reduction of 40% when you have 4 or more Giant Ape category allies on the team, right? This makes it so that the team building options for this unit right now are quite limited. Unless the majority of your team are in the Great Ape Power category, he's actually not going to be that impressive, right? Because without the damage reduction, his defense is just okay, it's good, but nothing amazing. And his damage output, like I said, is respectable, but uh, you know, once again, not going to blow you away. So on any team where you're not running four or more Giant Ape Power units, his effectiveness, his usefulness is going to be much reduced, right? So that's why he's at number 6 on the list right now. Like I said, I still think he's a great unit. I still love the Super Saiyan 4 Gohan. And once he gets a Dokkan Awakening, he's going to shoot right up this list. He might be number 1 for all we know, right? But right now, just in his SSR form, still impressive. Just, in my opinion, not as good as the other guys. And uh, with that said, let's move on to number 5 on this list, which is... STR Super Saiyan 4 Bardock. Now, as far as just the character goes, Bardock is actually my favorite of the new batch because I just love Bardock, man. He's one of my favorite characters in the entire franchise, and Super Saiyan 4 might be my favorite form of him. But with that said, he's also similar to Gohan in the sense that he's only at his full powers when you have four or more crossover category allies on the team, right? So in terms of team building, He's going to be a little bit limited right now as well. But he's higher than Gohan because, number one, he has better stats. 15,335 attack at rainbow status in his SSR form is insane. And then 14,975 HP and 9,444 defense. Now, of course, when I say in his SSR form, I mean without a token awakening. Obviously, you're still going to awaken him into a UR right so yeah that's the first thing he has better stats than gohan number two though is that um when gohan and bardock both don't have this additional boost from having four or more specific units or category allies on their team for gohan it's a uh, giant eight power for bardock it's crossover the remainder of bardock's passive i think is much better than gohan's so for gohan he gets just a high chance to stun the attack enemy when performing a super attack, which is nice. But Bardock gets attacks effective against all types when HP is 80% or more, and then performs a guaranteed critical hit when HP is 90% or more. So offensively, this guy is extremely, extremely impressive. Like, getting guaranteed crits over 90% HP is insane. And then even above 80%, you're still getting effective against all types, just like, you know, the Super Gogetas out there, LR Gogeta, so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, Bardock really, really impressed me. His amazing stats on top of his crazy passive probably make him the best 
unawakened unit in the game right now. And the only reason he's not higher is, of course, because he doesn't have that token awakening yet. Once he gets that token awakening, I can easily see him being better than every other unit on this list, better than Super Saiyan 4 Vegito, better than Super Saiyan 4 Broly. Unfortunately, we're probably going to have to wait at least a year or two for that to happen. But you know what? It's okay, because the longer we wait, the better he'll be and the happier I'll be as a huge fan of Bardock, right? So that's number five. We have Super Saiyan 4 Bardock. And now at number four, we have AGL Demon God Tabura. Now this unit initially wasn't that impressive to me, but after I rainbowed him and after I took him on a couple of events, I realized just how versatile this unit is, both um, offensively and defensively. So first things first, he has a high chance of stunning the attacked enemy for two turns on a super attack. And he also gets attack and defense plus 100%, and then an additional attack and defense plus 100%, and debuffing the attack enemy's attack and defense by 20% for two turns when facing only one enemy. So if you're only facing one enemy, he's getting attack and defense plus 200%. So damage output is going to be really good. Defense is going to be really good as well, right around like 100 and 60k or so in my experience. But then if you're facing two or more enemies, then he's still getting that additional 100% defense boost, but he doesn't get any additional attack. So his offense or his damage output is gonna be quite a bit lower, but he's getting a high chance or a 50% chance of evading all enemy attacks. So in my opinion, he is a unit that was built for Super Battle Road, an extreme Super Battle Road, high chance to stun the enemy so they can't attack you, and then a bunch of defense and also high chance of evading enemy attacks. If you guys have been struggling with, um, you know, any of the Super Battle Road stages or Extreme Super Battle Road where uh, you can use this guy, then definitely throw him on your team. I think he will make a very big difference. So Dabura is at number four on the list, mainly because of his versatility. His damage output honestly didn't blow me away. His defense wasn't like mind-blowingly awesome either but he's very good in both departments and that versatility is also a nice bonus so that is number four we have the demon god Dabura. so moving on from there you guys can probably guess the rankings for the next three units but let's go through it anyways we have at number three demon goddess toa now she uh, just does a lot. Number one, amazing leader skill, Dragon Ball Heroes category, key plus three. Okay, I want to say amazing, just very good leader skill. Key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 150%. Super attack, immense damage, lowers attack, and also seals the enemy's super attack. And then her passive for a support unit, she's getting a very good personal boost of attack and defense plus 100%. And then she gives all allies, not just extreme, all allies, key plus three, Attack and defense plus 30% with a high chance to go up to attack and defense plus 40%. So about 50% of the time, she's going to be giving all allies key plus 3, attack and defense plus 40%. And then for that one turn, you fall below 50% HP, she's going to be healing you for 50% and also giving extreme class units an additional attack and defense plus 50%. So on that turn, she's going to be giving your extreme class units up to key plus 3, attack and defense plus 90%. But if you get unlucky and these don't proc, you're still going to be getting key plus 3, attack and defense plus 80% at the minimum. So yeah, as far as support goes, uh, Toa is, in my opinion, one of the best support units in the entire game. She just does a little bit of everything, lowering attack, ceiling super attack, fantastic support passive, and also a massive heal when you need it most. And um, I guess the only complaint I have about her is that her stats are a little bit low, at least her attack stat, 13,135 is quite low, but obviously she's not meant to do damage. She can still put out probably like 1.5 to 1.7, 1.8 mil, depending on the rotation. So good damage for sure, but that's not her main thing. And her defense is 10,010 at rainbow status. She's actually tanking better than most support units in this game. So there we have it, Demon Goddess Toa at number three. And now for number two, it's gonna be Tech Super Saiyan 4 Broly. Now at this point, I'm sure you guys know what number one's gonna be. And I actually kind of was unsure about this one. I flipped flop between this guy and number one, which is Super Saiyan 4 Vegito. But after doing some more extensive testing and 
Also putting out a Twitter poll to get some input from you guys. I have concluded that Super Saiyan 4 Broly should be number two on this list. And this dude hits really, really hard. Okay, his kit might be a little bit boring. People call him a caveman and I think that's justified because there's not too much going on here. Okay, he just hits hard, does a lot of damage and he does it really, really well. In fact, he is actually one of the hardest hitting TURs in the game. I think in the top five, possibly even higher than that. And the reason for that is because on a great eight power team or on a crossover team, when linked up with Super Saiyan 4 Vegito and with another support like a second Super Saiyan 4 Vegito or um, Demon Goddess Toa, Supreme Kai of Time or something like that, this guy is getting an attack stat of over 4 million per super and he's getting an additional super very often, like most of the time I use him actually, he's getting at least two supers per turn, sometimes three with some hidden potential investment. So yeah, up to three super attacks, over four million per super, it's just crazy. And defensively, he's actually a lot better than people give him credit for. The only issue is that he only gets his defense boost when he performs a super attack. So if you put him in the first slot before he has a chance to attack, then he's gonna be taking a ton of damage. But as long as you put him in the second slot or in the first slot without any attacks in the beginning, then he's actually really good defensively. You know, he's getting over 100,000 defense at rainbow status. It's gonna be right around like 150, 160K. So while it's not good enough to take a type disadvantage super in like Super Battle Road, or uh, the legendary Goku event against MUI Goku, it will hold up quite well in like 95% of the events in this game. So yeah, even though he has a bit of a boring kit, people call him a caveman just like LR Jiren, I've got a lot of love for this unit. He's super fun to run and he's just a beast. Of course, his stats are fantastic too. He's got 16,846 attack, 18,545 defense, or sorry, HP, and defense is 10,845, of course, at rainbow status. But these are comparable to a Dokkan Festival exclusive unit. So there is Super Saiyan 4 Broly, easily number two on the list, in my opinion. And finally, we have Super Saiyan 4 Vegito. Now, the reason that I thought maybe Broly was just slightly above Super Saiyan 4 Vegito for a bit was because Broly just hits so much harder than Vegito. Like, Vegito does great damage. Like, he's getting just over 3 million attack with double supports, but Broly's getting over 4 million, a lot of times twice, and sometimes even three times, right? So um, that's why for a bit I was like, I think Broly might be the better unit because he's doing so much more damage, and he's also pretty good on defense, but... Um, when you consider everything that Vegito has to offer, everything he brings to the table, I think it's pretty clear that he's still the best unit from this batch, and rightfully so. It is Super Saiyan 4 Vegito after all, right? So starting with the leader skill, crossover category Q plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 170%. When I first saw this in the Dokkan Now, I was like, yo, Vegito is a Dokkan Fest unit. And then when I realized that he wasn't a Dokkan Fest unit, I was like, they really gave him 170% across the board. I mean, I know it's like the crossover category, but this category is actually really good. So 170% across the board for a excellent category is already an amazing start. And then his super attack raises defense for one turn, which helps a lot with his tanking. And his passive makes him a fantastic support unit, right? Giving crossover category allies key plus one, attack and defense plus 20%. Same thing for giant ape power category allies. So for the Heroes, Super Saiyan 4 unit, he's giving them key plus 2, attack and defense plus 40%, and for himself, he's getting key plus 2, attack and defense plus 180%. And then finally, he has the high chance, which is a 50% chance of evading enemy super attacks and countering with tremendous power, which of course can save your life on Super Battle Road, uh, Extreme Super Battle Road, so on and so forth. So, one to consider everything that he has available to him his entire kit. I do think it's definitely better than Broly. Oh, on top of that, he has better stats. 17,316 attack, 19,200 HP, and 9,430 defense. Oh, another big consideration was the viability on other teams, right? While Broly needs another giant ape power category ally on the same rotation to get 
his additional super. Vegito is awesome on every category team or every team he can fit on. You know, Patara, Time Travelers, Kamehameha, Dragon Ball Heroes, Final Trump Card, Battle of Wits, Giant 8 Power, and Crossover. He's especially good on Crossover and Giant 8 Power, but even if he's not supporting the rest of your rotation on the other teams, um, he's still going to be doing his own thing, right? He plus 2, attack and defense plus 180%, high chance to dodge and counter supers, raising defense for one turn on a super attack. And yeah, overall, Super Saiyan 4 Vegito is just an amazing, amazing unit. And definitely, in my opinion, deserves to be number one on this list. So there you have it, guys. All six of the new Dragon Ball Heroes units from this year ranked from number six to number one. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this list and what, if anything, would you change about it. But before we go, let's uh, quickly talk about the new awakenings for some of these older heroes units like Dark Mass King, Black Mass Saiyan, Demigra, and Super Mira. And I would probably put all of them somewhere above AGL Tabura, but below Super Saiyan 4 Broly. Yeah, because while I think all four of them are awesome, I believe that Broly and Vegito are better. And in terms of where I would rank these four, like among each other, um, I would probably go Dark Mask King number one for his ability to lower attack and defense, and also recovering 10% of HP um, or damage dealt as HP. And when he gets attacked, he gets 300% attack, or sorry, 300% defense for five turns while also guarding against all attacks. If you have another Dragon Ball Heroes category ally attacking at the same turn, so defensively, he is basically impenetrable. Like this dude can keep your team alive on his own with his crazy tanking and uh, constant healing. So yeah, I would go Dark Mask King number one, and then number two, I would say is Black Mask Saiyan, number three, Demon or Makioka form Demigra, and finally Super Mira at number four. Now of course, once again, just because he's at the bottom of these awakenings, in my opinion, doesn't mean that he's not bad. In fact, all 10 of these new units slash new awakenings are fantastic. They're all very impressive, and I really gotta give it to Bandai for just for giving us such a dope cast of characters to play around with um, for this year's collab. I hope that all subsequent collabs are similar because I honestly had a lot of fun and I can't wait for next year's Heroes collab, hopefully with Awakenings for Xeno Vegeta, Xeno Goku, and maybe Super Saiyan 4 Gohan and Super Saiyan 4 Bardock. But anyways guys, that is today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, if you guys liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.